Today's topic is tracker integration. What is tracker integration? It, it, it is also called endotracheal integration, and it is the placement of a tube into the trachea. Its purpose is to maintain a patient airway in those who are unconscious or unable to maintain their airways for other reasons. Let's watch a video that talks about how to perform a tracheal intubation. Ensure that the equipment is prepared and check that the laryngoscope is working and the cuff on the tube inflates and deflates properly. Pre-oxygenate the patient with bag and mask ventilation for up to one minute before attempting to intubate. Standing behind the patient with the head in the sniffing the morning air position, with the left hand, insert the curved blade of the laryngoscope into the mouth over the right side of the tongue, displacing it to the left and upwards. Advance the laryngoscope slightly until the tip of the epiglottis can be seen posterior to the back of the tongue. Advance the tip of the laryngoscope blade into the vallecula between the epiglottis and the tongue. With the handle of the laryngoscope pointing away from you at 45 degrees, lift upwards and away to lift up the tongue and epiglottis to display the vocal cords and the laryngeal opening. With the right hand, insert the endotracheal tube from the right hand side of the mouth directly between the cords and into the trachea until the cuff passes through the cords. The markings on the tube at the incisors will show between 21 and 24 centimeters in the average sized adult when the tube is in position. Remove the laryngoscope and inflate the cuff with approximately 15 mils of air to prevent air leaking during ventilation. Attach the tube to the bag and valve apparatus and ventilate the patient with the oxygen flow on 12 to 15 liters per minute. Confirm the position of the tube by auscultating over the apices of the lungs, the axillae and the stomach. If it is not in the correct position, deflate the cuff and remove the tube. Resort back to bag and mask ventilation and repeat the intubation process from the beginning. If the tube is in too far, the right lung will be ventilated only via the right main bronchus. If this occurs, deflate the cuff and withdraw the tube two to three centimeters. Reinflate the cuff and recheck the position. When the tube is in the correct position, tie it in place with cotton tape and attach the tube to the ventilating apparatus and ventilate the patient. So thank you for foundation skills. Let's see our next slide that talks about the benefits of trachea intubation. So, compared to the use of pharyngeal airways, oropharyngeal or nasopharyngeal, benefits of an endotracheal airway include protection against aspiration and gastric insufflation, more effective ventilation and oxygenation, facilitation of suction in, and delivery of anesthetic and other drugs via the endotracheal tube. Let's watch this video. To cut the endotracheal tube to length, remove the connector. Note that the connection to the tube may be tight, and then cut the tube diagonally to make it easier to reinsert the connector. Replace the endotracheal tube connector. The fitting should be tight so that the connector does not inadvertently separate during insertion or use. Ensure that the connector and tube are properly aligned so that kinking of the tube is avoided. Connectors are made to fit a specific size tube. They cannot be interchanged among tubes of different sizes. When inserting the stylet, it is essential that the tip does not protrude from the end or side hole of the endotracheal tube to avoid trauma to the tissues. The stylet is secured so that it cannot advance further into the tube during intubation. Select a blade. A zero is typical for preterm babies and a one for term newborns. Attach it to the handle by holding the blade and handle parallel. Place the hook of the blade over the bar of the handle and pull downward along the plane of the handle. Turn the light on by clicking the blade into the open position to assure that the batteries and light are working. 
Check to see the bulb is screwed in tightly. First, stabilize the baby's head with your right hand. Free flow oxygen should be delivered throughout the procedure. Second, slide the laryngoscope blade over the right side of the tongue, pushing the tongue to the left side of the mouth, and advance the blade until the tip lies in the vallecula, just beyond the base of the tongue, or place the tip under the epiglottis and lift the epiglottis upward to expose the glottis. Third, lift the blade slightly, thus lifting the tongue out of the way to expose the pharyngeal area. When lifting the blade, raise the entire blade by pulling up in the direction the handle is pointing. Do not elevate the tip of the blade by using a rocking motion and pulling the handle toward you. Poor visualization of the glottis may also be caused by not elevating the tongue high enough to bring the glottis into view. Now let's watch a video that explains us how to use a buggy for endotracheal intubation. Let's listen and watch what they have for us. High flow oxygen, a nasal cannula, and uh, so we got a passive oxygenation as uh, certain elevation. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do the intubation with the storks. However, uh, the intubator is not going to be able to visualize it, and uh, it, it's, we're, we're going to watch the screen. He's not, but he's going to use a bougie. So we're going to actually watch him uh, do a bougie intubation. You don't mind being on YouTube, Randy? No, I don't mind. I've her several times. <laughs> so what Dr. Uh, Jones is doing here is he's going to actually uh, ramp up the head appropriately. So we're going to try and put the uh, tragus of the year. Cord. I 
Looks like you're about there. Well, you're off the side a little bit. Yeah, No, you're off the side. You're off the side. That's your fire, man. Go ahead. Tracking intubation. Patients who require intubation have at least one of the following five indications. First one, an inability to maintain airway patiency, patiency inability to protect the airway against aspiration, the ventilatory compromises, a failure to adequately oxy oxygenate pulmonary capillary blood, anticip anticipation of a deteriorating course that will eventually lead to the inability to maintain airway patency or protection. Let's watch a video to talk about an intubation with the air track device. This is a new method. So let's listen what they have for us. on a video. Let's see what's going on. We have internet reception. reception. There we are.
you last time for going perfect, I thought, too. about endotracheal intubation in the RSI with rucuronium and ketamine. So let's listen and watch for... One of those rapid sequence intubation, this patient is an overdose. So uh, she's not all that the kidney, but she's not connecting her airway all that well. So what we're going to do is we're going to intubate her to protect her airway. Uh, in preparation for the intubation, what you need to do is make sure that the entire head of the bed is ready to go. And that includes you know, 100% nominal breather on the patient, suction set up so that you can suction the patient, suction should be turned all the way up to full and should not be on intermittent. In addition, you need diagram mask set up and with air flow into it. The catnometer needs to be set up and calibrated so that we know when the tube is in. The whole idea behind the rapid sequence intubation is to be able to get the endotracheal tube into the trachea and minimize the risk of the patient either becoming hypoxic or the patient uh, vomiting and aspirating. So she's not protecting her airway very, very well. She's protecting her a little bit. And the idea is the following. What we're going to do is we're going to put the endotracheal tube into her and we'll protect her airway the rest of the way and we'll make sure we can control her respirations as well. We've got a 100% nominal breather on her because what we want to do is we want to wash all the nitrogen out of her lungs and be able to just have oxygen in there. So that'll give us about a minute or two to put the endotracheal tube in. As soon as we push our meds, she's going to lose the rest of her airway reflexes because we're going to paralyze her as well as sedate her a little bit more. As soon as we push the medicine, Kate's going to put some pressure on the cricothyroid membrane and that's going to include the esophagus. She's also going to put a little bit of pressure that's going to push the uh, cricothyroid me membrane backwards, upwards, and to the right. So, backwards, upwards, right where pressure, burp is a mnemonic cord. And that's gonna make it a little bit easier for us to see what's going on. In addition, we've got the endotracheal tube prepared. It's got a syringe on it, a 10cc syringe. We can blow the balloon up, and we've got our laryngoscope already set up to go, and we can check the light on it. We're gonna do her with uh, rocuronium and ketamine. And when you use rocuronium, it's the opposite of what a lot of people think. We push the rocuronium first, which is the paralytic, we wait 15 seconds, and then we're going to go ahead and push the sedative agent. In her case, we're using ketamine because the blood pressure is a little bit on the low side. Okay, go ahead and push the rocuronium. Alright, the rocuronium is going in now. Okay, so we're going to wait about 15 seconds and then we're going to push the sedative. In this case, we're going with ketamine on heart. Okay, push the ketamine. And what you generally find is, again, because she's an overdose, she's waxing and waning a little bit. If you weren't stimulating her, she'd go completely asleep. She's really not protecting her airway great. Okay, go ahead and put a little bit of cricoid pressure on her. work. 
Because then we're going to sweep the tongue to the left.